It's been a long and tiring day of gaming. You've gotten to the end of level 2, finally after many hours of trying and failing and deaths, and you finally want to just go and get some sleep, and you want to turn your computer off, but you don't want to be losing your progress that you've worked so hard to get. So, saving the game! It's something that really should be impl implemented into most video games at one point or another. Now, uh, as always, as I like to say, there's a bunch of ways to be doing this. Um, the first one, very obviously, I suppose, is in the player object. Uh, if you were to say, I don't know, let's add an event, when you press the... what key should be for saving? I guess... I don't know, I'll just arbitrarily make the uh, the L key. Uh, let's see... Where, where are they? Letters... There we go, the L key uh, for saving, for no apparent reason other than it's far away from all the other buttons you might be pressing. Where you can just say, game... save. Wow, I misspelled two four-letter words at once. And this is going to take one argument, and it's going to be the file name. And we can just say, uh, just make the file name save dot save. Um, the extension doesn't even matter. You don't even really need an extension. The file extensions are just so that Windows knows what to do with the files if you were to double click on them. Um, but if you're writing a program that uses it, then uh, you don't really need to bother with file extensions. Uh, and when, let's see, say, I won't put it in the uh, create event. Let's say when you hit the, what's another good key out? K. K can be for loading, and we can say game load. And this also takes a, uh, this also takes one argument, and it says save. Alright, because that's the name of the file that we're saving and loading from. Now, we run the game, and we, uh, let's see, we come over, over here, and we were to jump on there, and we hit L, and the game has been saved, and say we die or something, and I died, and I'm going to hit K, and we're going to end up back here. So that's the quick way of doing it. However, there are a number of problems with uh, game save, game makers built in saving um, functions that you'll probably run into sooner or later. It's basically just a snapshot of the computer's RAM at the moment that you save the game, not unlike a, um, a save state from an emulator. However, if you were to, say, change something in the game, say you were to... Um, I don't know, put a couple extra variables or something in the game. Uh, if you were to load the game, the, uh, the save state, we'll call it, then they wouldn't be there because it's a snapshot of an earlier RAM, and the game suddenly has to use a variable that it doesn't know exists because, well, for obvious reasons, it's not there. So we don't want to do that. We're not going to be using game load and game, game save. So I'm just going to go and really quickly create my own functions. And I'm just going to call them load and save. They're both undefined right now. I'm going to define them in a minute. And no, not save W, save, because I can spell. And we are going to be going into this little scripts thing. And I thought I talked about this earlier, but apparently not because there's nothing in here. But I just realized that I'm still on my, uh, as I'm calling it, my lesson nine. I guess I'll have to fix that later. Anyhow, I'll worry about that on my own time, but we're going to be saying uh, this is going to be called save, and this is going to be called load. Now, these are basically your own functions that you're defining. They have a name if you want to. Um, they can take arguments with, say, um, I don't know, you can say variable a and b, and you can say a equals argument 0, and b equals argument 1, and then game, game maker will automatically... Uh, take it so that you have to say something like load, I don't know, 5 and 2 to use it, and if one of these two isn't there, then it's going to throw an error because because you haven't passed any values to argument 0 and argument 1. Uh, this is 0 and this is 1, and it's basically just another uh, variable does not exist sort of error. Anyhow, never do that. That's recursion with no base case, and that's never going to end very well. Anyhow, so I suppose we might as, might as well start off with save. By the way, another thing that you can do with functions, or with scripts, as the technical name is, is you can return a value. So you can say, uh, you can do some math and you can say return, I don't know, um, 9, that's a 0. But you can say return that and then you can say, you can use it as any other function like the square root or the min or the max or something. Anyhow, that's a quick overview of functions. They're pretty simple. They're the best thing that you can do in Game, game Maker, defining your own functions to do different things. Anyhow, saving and loading. One of those things that you can make them do. So. As always, I'm just going to be putting my um, um, javadoc-ish comment up there just so that we know what it does. And 
My preferred method of saving the game is going to be using this thing called INI files. Now, INI files, I guess I'll get off on a little tangent about them, are basically configuration settings. Uh, you may have noticed in some various Windows programs, and I'm going to assume Mac, uh, if I'll find an example on my computer somewhere. Here we go. Uh, here is an example from one of the other games installed on my computers. There's a couple different things inside INI. There are these things, uh, the headings, which will be a word surrounded by these braces here. Uh, and those are basically the different sections in the INI hierarchy. And then there's the keys, which are basically, they're not unlike a variable, and you can assign values to them. And then there's, lastly, there's the values, which is there, which are the values assigned to the, uh, the keys. And Windows, and I'm pretty sure other operating systems nowadays, has a lovely set of functions that you can use to easily and quickly um, read and write to these things for, say, data, storing data between runs of a program. Uh, this one happens to be uh, one of the old Harry Potter games on the Unreal Engine, in case you're wondering, uh, with all these UNR things and whatever. But that's INI. A game maker is so very nice and gives us a set of functions to go and use that as well. And we're going to start by saying INI open. And we're just going to say save dot I and I, I guess, so that we know um, outside of the program that this is an INI I file and we can open it and edit it or whatever we want. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. So this is somewhat limited. You can only have one of these open at a time. You can only be reading and writing, these, writing to one of these types of files at a time. Uh, and when you're done with one, it's in your best interest to close it like that so that um, the data for reading and writing to the file is not wasting computer RAM. And Maybe if you want to, uh, you want to be able to read and write to a different INI file later at another point, it doesn't throw a weird error. But that's that. I'm just going to be copying and pasting this to load real, really quickly because I'm lazy and uh, saving time and stuff. So to write to a file when you're saving, you're going to want to say INI write, and then you can either write strings or values or uh, real numbers rather to the uh, the keys there. And I think we're just going to say uh, let's go with real for now. And how about the first thing that we save is going to be the room that you're in. So how about uh, we need a section, we need a key, and we need a value. So the value obviously is going to be uh, room, and that's going to be the room that you're standing in. That's three O's, not two. Uh, let us go and call the section something like, I don't know, location, because why not? And then the key is going to be just room, and that's all good. So we can save the game now and run the game. And if the the uh, specified INI file doesn't exist, it's just going to create it for us. So we're going to hit L, save the game, and we are going to. Uh, I'm going to go into that's um, that's something completely different. Here it is, this folder here. I'm going to drag this over to this monitor so that you can see it. Uh, and you see we have this file called save, and it has a second called location and a value called room. And the current index of the room that we're sending in is zero. And uh, all right, so we have written to an INI file. It's really wonderful. Also, just for the sake of doing so, I'm going to have a uh, player.x and player.y saved as well so that so that we have some of that information sorted as well. So just uh, however creatively x and y. And uh, once again, I might as well just run the game again, hit L, open up. The, uh, the lessons folder and go into save the i9 and you can now see that room player x and player y has been saved. Alright, so that has been stored for a different run of the game. Now to load it. So we're going to go into load and reading from i is very similar to writing from them. To get a value, you can say uh, the value that you want is going to be, let's just uh, let's just get the players x and y first. Uh, x equals i9 read real so you're reading a reel instead of writing it. So it's pretty much the same thing. And the contents are going to be basically the same thing as writing it as well. Uh, location, x, and now instead of the value that you're going to save, you're going to take the default. And this is just in case, for whatever crazy reason, uh, the value that you're looking for does not exist. Say, uh, I'm not a silly user accidentally deleted one of the keys, or maybe um, you're on a different version of the program, and the last time you saved the game when you were testing it, you had you had something uh, that wasn't added to the game yet, and instead of say the game crashing, you're just looking for a default value. 
Let's just make that, what was I forget the coordinates of the starting position in the room, but let's do that. Uh, let's just say the default x is going to be 256 and the default y is going to be 192. 256. I'm going to copy and paste that for y. Make that 192. And make that say y. All right, so that's the location. Next, uh, the room, the third piece of information that's in that file, we're going to just say room go to. And the index of the room that we're going to be going to, instead of, say, hard coding a value like level 2, or I misspelled that, or say uh, the fifth room in the game that you've added, we're just going to say i and i re. There we go. So we're going to be taking uh, the location in the room. I should really just leave this, uh, this file open so that you can see the contents. You're going to be moving to that room. So we're going to run this game here. And we are going to say, uh, let's go a little places. We're in room two now. And we're going to save the game with L. And we're going to uh, have a run into an enemy a couple times and die. All right, we respawned. We're going to hit K to load the game now. And here we are. All right. So there are other ways of saving the game. You can do direct file input or output. You have a bunch of functions for just reading and writing to files without I and I. Uh, if you want to take a text file or something like that unformatted, you can say file. Uh, text open, uh, read or write or whatever, and there's a bunch of functions related to that. I'll be making videos on that later, but this is the important bit. Uh, I think ionize are very, really quite powerful mechanisms for storing data, uh, usually saving games, but also other settings, say, I don't know, the screen brightness or something, anything like that, that you might want to use, or even like metadata for the game. Well, not really metadata, but uh, if you want to know which version of the game you're running in case you have different types of save files for different updates of your game. Uh, you can use I, &I to save those. Uh, there's also binary files, but those are more complicated. Uh, and I'll probably be uh, getting into those much later. Uh, GameMaker 8 and 8.1, you can write to the Windows registry, but that's been removed from Studio, and that's something that you probably shouldn't be doing anyway. So I won't be making a video on that unless a lot of people want me to. But yeah, that's it for saving and loading. I'll probably, yeah, I think the next videos I make will be on uh, file IO with text files and binary files, and I'll be putting those up next week. But for now, I hope you all enjoy that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch more stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.